Hello everyone, welcome to my brand new series. What do you think? New theme, building my very own Skyhawk for X-Plane. Uh, and as you know, I've been really, really looking forward to this new series. I've always been interested in how to build a plane actually for, for flight sim. And I always thought that you needed, well, a, a lot of experience and insight into all kinds of technical applications, Photoshop and 3D modeling. And as it turns out, that's actually also the case, but it is actually quite accessible for us all. Um, explain also um, ships, um, it's its product together with Plane Maker, and there are lots of tutorials online um, that you can follow to build your very own aircraft. Uh, and so I thought, well, it might be quite interesting to build my own. And as you know, I'm a complete Skyhawk um, lover. So uh, obviously I'm going to try to build my own Skyhawk in, in X-Plane, but not just an ordinary plane, fun kind of airplane, but actually I'd like to, if I can, develop a proper study level Skyhawk, um, including all kinds of features that I would love to see as a avid flight simmer in uh, in my Skyhawk and perhaps we can collaborate with sim coders as well to make uh, the reality extension pack available for that Skyhawk and um, create a wonderful new Skyhawk um, that can be used by any serious student pilot uh, online which I think is really 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 great so uh, this is not a project at all of uh, filling some kind of niche or to create a, a, a commercial product no it's primarily a product or a project, I should say, um, uh, for my own educational pleasure to learn more about how to develop an aircraft, to do the liveries and all kind of 3D modeling and the cockpit and stuff. Um, and at the same time, also learning about just the Skyhawk itself, the aircraft. Uh, I mean, we need to tinker with lots of different measures and stuff to get the physics right, uh, physics right of the Skyhawk, which I think is also very, very interesting and uh, educationally relevant also as a pilot. So uh, that's something that I'm really, really looking forward to, to get uh, into um, those uh, technicalities of the Skyhawk um, and at the same time, just building a wonderful Skyhawk. Now, um, I'm also gonna uh, make it freely available for anyone to use uh, once we get to some kind of version that is flyable. So this is gonna be a complete freeware kind of project. Uh, and uh, so, so no commercial aim or whatsoever. Um, and because I'm streaming it, I think uh, it would be great as well to um, uh, inspire you perhaps to build your own aircraft and to show you uh, what you need to know in order to make an aircraft. Now, uh, I'm a complete noob. So uh, I'm starting completely from scratch. So this is not a tutorial series um, in which I'm gonna to explain to you how to build an aircraft. I have no idea myself uh, of how to build a Skyhawk yet in, in, in X-Plane, for X-Plane with Plane Maker and all that stuff. So this is more as as usual also with my um, already existing flight training series uh, on the, at the Uncertified Pilot. Um, it is a vlog series. I'm vlogging my own learning curve, my own experiences, learning experiences of becoming a uh, aircraft uh, engineer uh, in, in the world of flight simulation. So that's the uh, the general spirit of the series. And this is the very first episode that I'm going to expect. I'm expecting to, um, to well, to take up at least 100 episodes or even more to uh, finish uh, this Skyhawk. So it's going to be quite a steep learning curve, uh, but I think very, very interesting. So I cannot wait to start. Hey, Finnish, good to see you as well. Pat, good to see you. The question, what features do you think are missing from different 172s available for any platform? Well, again, Finnish, it's not so much that I think that there's a niche or something that is missing. Uh, primarily, I'm just doing this because I just love to learn how to build an aircraft in flight sim. So that's first, but while I'm at it, it might be interesting also to consider interesting features that uh, have not been implemented by anyone or not developed by anyone yet for 172. So uh, I would also like to dedicate this first episode, I guess, to just, uh, from, well, I will also introduce you to some of the applications that are needed to build the aircraft. I did some study already um, on YouTube and, and that kind of stuff to see, um, to see what is needed to build an aircraft. So I'm still studying all of that, all of that stuff. I'm not gonna include my study as part of these series because that would be, I guess, a little bit too tiring. 
So I'm doing all of that study uh, off stream and the stuff that I learn, I share with you here through this, uh, through this series. Um, but anyways, um, I think there might be interesting features to consider building that Skyhawk. And I'm also open for any suggestions um, and to make it more like a collaborative effort, I guess, to, uh, to make that uh, Skyhawk a reality. Casmados, why don't you build a Cessna 150 or 152? Well, I'm, I'm just a 172 lover. That's just me. Uh, but yeah, I guess uh, once you own all of that software and you are familiar with how to build an aircraft, well, you can build pretty much anything. Not only already existing airplanes, but you can also build funny sign Uf UFOs or whatever your fantasy um, can uh, foresee as a, as a possible aircraft. You can build with... Uh, with Plane Maker and with the 3D model um, software. Um, so that's, um, yeah, the, the, the options are, are limitless. Uh, but in my case, a 172, and I guess the SP version, because um, that's the latest model, I think. Um, and um, it's also part of my uh, flight training series as well. I always fly with the Skyhawk in, um, in X-Plane. Uh, now with the default 172, with the uh, SimCoders Reality Extension Pack, um, but now I'm going to build my own Skyhawk model. All right, so that's the that's the general aim. Um, now, so here we are. Uh, I'm not at my usual cockpit, which is just next to me here. I'm just sitting behind my own iMac. So I'm using my iMac now as my aircraft development studio, as my own workshop. Um, so I hope you like it, and there's a lot of information there. So just before I start, I, I think it's it's interesting and relevant to just um, share with you my prior knowledge and prior study of how to build an aircraft, which is just very, very limited, obviously. Uh, I've, I've lots of knowledge gaps still, um, but just to give you a general orientation of what's going through my mind as I'm embarking on this project, building my own uh, Skyhawk. Okay, are you planning building an older Model 172? They are still missing from X-Plane, right? Well, that's a good idea, okay? Um, yeah, we, perhaps, perhaps. Um, I, I was more thinking like building an Skyhawk that is most popular, I guess. So if you're gonna visit your local flight school, um, what model of the Skyhawk would you most likely encounter at your local flight school? Um, and perhaps that's not the SP at all. Uh, perhaps that's another version or type of the of the Skyhawk. I don't really know yet. Might be interesting to consider that as well. I guess over time there are going to be SPs and perhaps also newer versions. So it doesn't really matter that much, I guess. But the, the primary aim, also as part of my uncertified pilot project, was to learn how to fly with an aircraft that's a the most popular student pilot aircraft and the Skyhawk is very very popular um, so that's why I also learned how to fly in the Skyhawk and that's why I also think it's appropriate to now build a Skyhawk as part of this uh, as this project that's the idea but what I am going to do which I think is lacking in, in X-Plane is a slant alpha version so um, I'm actually uh, not that into GPS flying or autopilot flying at all uh, but rather I'd like to um, uh, make use of uh, just plain old good old radios um, and uh, my own VFR sectional charts and really really trying to learn how to interpret those charts and do dead reckoning to get from A to B, right? That's uh, what I've been doing so far in my series. Not saying that the GPS has no value at all and as a pilot and also as a sim pilot, I think it's very, very relevant to also learn how to fly with the GPS, uh, which I am uh, also as part of my season two um, uh, uh, videos. But still, I would like to see a slant alpha version of a Skyhawk as well. Um, so you really you're forced to rely on those um, on those charts. Um, but anyways, I guess with a little bit more experience, I could also perhaps build several types, and you can fly your own Skyhawk just like you like uh, to, to fly it. Um, but again, I have no idea whether I will actually be able to do that. Um, I guess it's just a matter of time. I don't think it's that difficult to build an aircraft. Uh, for X-Plane, but yeah, you need to familiarize yourself with lots of new applications and stuff um, and get a workflow going, but once you reach that workflow, uh, I don't think it's that difficult at all, but we'll have to see. Um, let me see. So um, this is the um, 
the virtual workshop, as you can see, my iMac. Um, again, you can build these aircraft also in in uh, from your Windows computer, so you do not necessarily have to have a Mac at all. Uh, I have an iMac, so that's why I'm using uh, this computer for my aircraft development. Um, and um, as you can see on my desktop, I put some. Um, Put some sticky notes there that I'm going to fill with well features of things that we like to see in that Skyhawk. Um, I'm also going to discuss this is the stuff that I'm going to discuss with you today uh, for this current first episode of this series. Uh, and again, just a general orientation. So we're not going to do any fancy stuff today, uh, but we will very very uh, soon. But just like I just like to keep stick to that same slow pace kind of study academic way of doing things. Uh, that's really my preference. Um, so first an orientation. Um, these sticky notes um, that I'm going to use to just orient myself and also to uh, show you my to do's and things that are on my mind. Um, and as you can see also on top you see a progress bar um, that I put in. Uh, with all the different colors there um, and that's actually um, quite relevant I don't know if it's really spot on but um, I'm trying to conceptualize the stuff that I need to do in order to get to the completed Skyhawk model um, so to the left you can see that's the green bit there of the progress bar that it's at five percent um, which I guess includes my prior study um, we haven't made any progress so far obviously this is the first episode um, but as you can see there are some different stages almost to aircraft development that i've inferred from watching a lot of youtube movies um, about Playmaker and um, 3D modeling and stuff. Uh, also on the forums, explain forums, there's actually already a, a lot of information there, but not as much a, as I expected there would be, to be honest. So um, I also need to rely, I guess, on some uh, already experienced aircraft developers for explain who likes to, who like to support me or guide me through this process, um, because still I haven't found a complete overview just yet. I will mention those YouTube channels uh, in just a bit, uh, also as a resource for you to um, learn a little bit more about aircraft development. Um, but as you can see, we will, we're going to start with Plane Maker. Now, Plane Maker is a um, um, thanks for the follow, a bunch. Thanks. Welcome on the stream. Um, uh, Playmaker is a application that is provided or is um, included with the Xplane product, uh, which is really really cool. We also have airfoil maker, as you can see here at the bottom, where you can make airfoils. So the typical frame of the wing, which de well uh, determines to a great degree the kind of lift and the kind of flight performance you will have, but also just Playmaker where you can make the actual physical 3D model of uh, your aircraft. And it's not that difficult to work with at all. It will take some time obviously to get familiar with the, with the thing, but it's included for free just with X-Plane. So if you own X-Plane, you can build your own aircraft as well. Um, and that's what we're gonna start with. And that's the, uh, it's also quite interesting or I, I thought was kind of like a revolution at least in my mind you've got two things that we need to to build so there's the 3d model the physical model that x-plane uses to calculate all of the different physics that are going on when we're flying an aircraft which is also a 3d model that we're going to build and aside from that we should also build a quite similar 3D model of our Skyhawk, but that's the one that is just the visual, graphical, artistic side of the Skyhawk. So you actually have two models if you are doing it right. One is a more plain model, which x uses to do all those calculations, the physics. And the other model is really get a really nice, smooth, great looking Skyhawk. Um, so in a way, what you can actually do is in Playmaker, uh, create a quite authentic Skyhawk 3D model, uh, but with a three other 3D external third party 3D model software, um, create a toilet in 3D and match those in X-Plane. And you will actually see when you load up that air crane, uh, aircraft, you will see a toilet being loaded up on the, on the runway. But actually X-Plane doesn't see that toilet. It just loads up the physical 3D model. So that toilet will actually fly like a Skyhawk, even though it looks like a toilet. So those are three separate independent models, as you can, um, as you can imagine in that way. So what we're gonna do first in Playmaker is to create a 3D model that X-Plane is using to calculate all of those physics. And you could actually just stick with Playmaker and not use any 3D modeling at all. Uh, aside from that, you can just fly that 
more lower res polygon kind of 3D model. It actually already looks pretty cool, but not that cool as an A2A airplane or um, Coronado airplanes, for example. So um, that's just the first stage. Playmaker. Haley, thank you. Thank you for dropping by. Thanks for the encouragement. Um, so uh, that's Playmaker. Then uh, I would also like to, and this is more like Aerosim Gaming Rush kind of style work, uh, also like to be more uh, knowledgeable on that front, is to also fiddle around with uh, the particular airfoil of the, um, of the Skyhawk. Now there are different airfoils already available, preloaded, I guess, in Playmaker that you can use, more generic airfoils. But in Airfoil Maker, you can make your own. And this is actually where the magic sauce is for really getting your aircraft perform like it should uh, in comparison to the real world model. And uh, actually there, are, um, I don't know if that's also the case for the Skyhawk, but for many, many airplanes, um, that airfoil, particular airfoil, all the exact measures of what the airfoil looks like, is highly, highly secret and you cannot find it online. Um, so you need to approach it as best as possible by looking at the performance charts and doing test flights and right to get the tables, the specs right um, in, in X-Plane. Um, but this is also an interesting part. Um, not a big chunk of the aircraft development, but the airfoil maker, I would like to include it as well. Also get familiar with the program and also just to tinker with, the, well, again, the, the, the physics of the Skyhawk, um, which I think is uh, really, really interesting. Then um, Photoshop, so we're gonna make our livery, um, a daytime livery and a nighttime livery. I'm also very curious to see how that works. I mean, I've made my own Pop Hotel Tango Any Mike livery, as you know, um, in X-Plain on top of the default 172. So I already have some experience with Photoshop, also with editing a, um, a, a livery, but to create one from scratch, that's very, very interesting. Really looking forward to that, ch that chunk as well. Um, but then the real heart of the project arrives, and that's the yellow bit, Blender. So Blender is a freeware, you can just download it right away. It's, it's a very advanced, sophisticated 3D modeling software, uh, an application that uh, many, many aircraft developers for x I guess also for FSX and Prepared, use to create that fancy graphical um, 3D model that's going to be projected on top of the 3D model of X-Plane um, or the aircraft in X-Plane. Uh, and, and that's where the real challenge lies. I mean, uh, I have not done any 3D modeling in my life before, um, but I would really love to learn how to do that. Um, so what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do once we reach that stage at Blender, uh, we're gonna export our 3D model made in Playmaker into Blender. So we got a rough, low res kind of 3D model. It's good, but it's not that pretty. And then we're gonna work with that. We're gonna edit that 3D model uh, with all of the fancy, great advanced features that Blender offers to really make it quite more smooth and high res. We're also gonna make the 3D the 3D cockpit uh, using Blender. We need to model all of the knobs and switches, the, the seats. Um, perhaps you're also gonna work on some interesting new external 3D models that might be educationally relevant as well for student pilots in X-Plane. Um, but that's where the biggest challenge lies, I think. I'm expect I, I don't know, but I've just been reading forum posts and watching uh, YouTube videos. And this was the kind of conceptual conceptualization that was going in my mind in terms of uh, how much time or effort it would take to complete all these uh, all of these stages. So that's the biggest chunk, uh, Blender. Uh, really looking forward to that uh, stage as well. And then lastly, again, Photoshop, uh, but then we're gonna model or refine our model or the livery or all of the textures um, using the Blender 3D model. So the fancy one. Also the cockpit needs to have textures, right? Um, that we, um, uh, that we uh, have not uh, textured made or designed uh, before. So that is kind of like my current overview of what it takes to develop a proper study level aircraft for X-Plane. I guess it would also be the same for prepared or FSX. Um, but I think this is um, this is kind of it. So um, again, I don't think this is gonna be a two month or three month kind of project. This is gonna take some time. And again, because I'm starting from scratch, I have no idea yet. So I'm also vlogging through this series my own learning curve, my own learning experiences and sharing those 
um, with you guys, uh, as I also did when I started my uh, flight training series a year ago or so and had no clue how to fly a Skyhawk. Um, I did the same thing, uh, which, um, uh, which is really great, I think. And I'm gonna use the same kind of flair, same kind of style for uh, creating my very um, own uh, Skyhawk here in x -Plane. vlogging. Um, so that completes uh, the, the, the progress bar. So while we are progressing through the series, you will see that green bar there to the left top with the 5%, hopefully increasing, uh, indicating that we are making progress. And the first thing that we're gonna work on is Playmaker. Um, today though, uh, I'm gonna first orient it on some information that we need before we can actually start up Playmaker and start building a 3D model for X-Plane. We need to know what the Skyhawk looks like. We need to collect some specs and images and stuff. So um, that's what we're gonna do today as well, I hope. Um, alrighty, um, so yeah, uh, to the right here on my desktop, uh, desktop um, mostly shortcuts to folders. Um, yeah, I'm using Dropbox, not that uh, interesting. Uh, we got the X-Plane root folder. Uh, I've made a new aircraft folder within X-Plane that is gonna be filled hopefully with all kinds of 3D objects and liveries and stuff. So that's gonna be our Skyhawk, the Papa Hotel. Uh, I named it, uh, which is not an existing, a non-existing type of the Skyhawk, but hey, this is experimental. We're gonna make our own. And I think based off the SP version, the Shira Papa version, um, but perhaps you guys, um, perhaps you guys have um, other ideas as well of what other kind of type of Skyhawk might be more, useful, but I think that the SP uh, uh, is great. Well, this is a link to uh, my progress bar so I can change it. Um, I'm also, um, I also have a folder that we're gonna fill today actually with uh, PDFs and pictures of the Skyhawk, a front view and a side view and a top view that we can actually load into Playmaker to kind of like build our 3D model on top of a 2D picture of the Skyhawk, which makes life a lot more easy and practical, as I've learned through watching a couple of YouTube videos. Um, so uh, references, um, yeah, this is a folder um, that I'm gonna use just to make screenshots. And if I drop it into that folder, it's gonna be tweeted out so we can uh, let our followers know as well what we're doing here and attract as many sim pilots into the stream. Because I also think that making your own aircraft is actually quite fun. It's another dimension to, our flight simulation practice, I think. Uh, I think that there are many sim pilots who are quite unaware of how fun it might be to, to build your own aircraft. And you don't need to necessarily create um, an entire new study level aircraft. You can also just just have fun and, and just um, use an, exi an existing aircraft from X-Plane and just edit it. Uh, for example, um, putting some um, jet engines on top of a Skyhawk and see what happens. I mean, X-Plane is gonna calculate, do all of the physics and you actually get a quite authentic, realistic experience of what it would be like to fly a Skyhawk with jet engines. Um, so it's also quite fun. Um, in my case, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm really gonna hopefully build a uh, proper Skyhawk, uh, but just to let you know. So I guess just spreading the word and also just to, hopefully sharing my enthusiasm and interest uh, of building an aircraft with you guys. I hope to inspire some of you as well to do the same. Um, and lastly, just put my window away here, uh, a dump folder where we can put all kinds of other stuff that we might need. So that's the desktop. Um, let me see, what else? So yeah, I'm using uh, Mac OS. Uh, you can also use Windows, Stickies, uh, Basic, Progress Bar, I've already mentioned. Desktop folders are already did. Well, the doc, so uh, what kind of programs are we using? So first off, um, I really like to work with music. Uh, like anyone, I guess. Uh, but uh, as you might have known, especially when you are a streamer, you can uh, just stream music because it's copyrighted and blah, 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 blah. So um, I'm using Pretzel. Uh, and Pretzel is a very, very basic music player, uh, but it only includes um, music um, that's been curated actually, uh, which is just free for live streaming and also uh, will not lead to YouTube um, uh, disabling or well banning my YouTube videos because I'm using copyrighted music. So this is a, if you are a streamer, check out Pretzel. It's a free app, you can download it right away. It's not, you don't find any pop, really popular music artists obviously in this music, um, uh, in this music library, but really nice background music that I think is stimulating my work here. So um, yeah, 
not that relevant as an app for the aircraft development part, but um, again, pretzel. Um, uh, Discord, obviously, Safari, uh, Internet browsers, OBS, uh, Sticky's already mentioned, so Playmaker, which is um, included in, in Xplain already talked about that as well. The Airflow Maker, uh, this is Blender. Um, we can just load it up so I can show you just how it looks like, might be fun. So this is Blender. Um, what should we do? Can we just start? Yes, so. Um, 3D modeling software, I have no idea, guys. I've seen a couple of videos, so I kind of know. Um, but um, yeah, here we are. So a 3D model, um, we're gonna load in our Skyhawk and we're gonna tinker and add, append other 3D models on top of it to create a Skyhawk. It's gonna be so, so exciting. A, a very lightweight, application actually, uh, freeware, but very, very sophisticated. You can create just amazing animations. Um, you can just have a look at YouTube or at the Blender uh, website. Um, it's actually quite exciting, um, to be honest. Anyways, that's Blender, quit anyway. Um, let me also load up Playmaker just to uh, to show you. Looks like Xplane has been loaded, but it's not. So this is the first screen that you see when you load up uh, Xplane, just a weird kind of cube. Um, let me see, you can use these arrow keys and you can change it. This is where you start with. So um, this is where we're gonna start with. And from this, we're gonna build our own Skyhawk, which, um, well, looks a little bit more challenging than it actually is, at least uh, looking at those YouTube uh, videos. Um, but this is um, uh, Playmaker. You can see it's the old kind of interface, but it kind of works uh, as the first stage of our aircraft development. Um, Playmaker, Airflow Maker, Blender, Xplane, obviously we're gonna load in our aircraft, also do test flights, so I also installed Xplane here and a joystick, so, uh, but that's for later on. We got Photoshop, obviously, to make delivery and stuff, um, just the HTML basic editor. Um, yeah, I also have an app where I can draw on the screen, so um, if you guys are gonna teach me and I'm gonna perhaps share some stuff that I'm learning as well, uh, perhaps making a drawing on screen like Rush is doing, Airsim Gaming is doing as well, might be uh, might become handy. Also, I've, uh, I'm working with a key visualizer that you perhaps already noticed in the left bottom corner. So if I touch any blah, 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 um, letters there, you can see to the left what uh, uh, buttons, uh, keystrokes uh, I'm using, which might be interesting and helpful if I'm working with, uh, with um, uh, Blender or in Playmaker because you actually need to learn a lot of new shortcuts to be able to work with those programs. So that's again something that um, uh, well requires, demands a quite steep learning curve. But I think it's it's informative to also show you what shortcuts that I'm using so you can mimic the stuff that I'm doing. Um, um, I think that's uh, that's that's good good stuff. Um, let me see, um, what's next? Um, Keystrokes, yeah, and the PyDash receiver, just as background stuff, uh, perhaps we're gonna listen to PyDash while we are working. Anyways, uh, music I uh, mostly prefer. Um, yes, so let me see, oh yeah, we also got zoom, so in case you guys don't see, uh, I can zoom as well um, for the smaller bits. Um, that's something that we can do, music, second, yeah, I also have a, a second space here, just part of Mac, Max OS, uh, but so you know what's happening here. I've got multiple desktops, so I can, for example, put Photoshop on the other and a Playmaker here, and we can very easily switch between spaces, which is uh, quite handy. Um, we got different stream scenes, yeah, um, also not that uh, relevant, uh, I guess, uh, but we can change up all kinds of uh, different things here to make the stream as best as possible. And again, let me know your suggestions, guys, so we can improve. Um, and yeah, because of my uh, internet bandwidth here, I'm limited to 70, uh, 720p. Uh, and I know that's not ideal, especially with all of these small letters and stuff there. Um, so it's perhaps hard to read. So if you find anything that um, you'd like to know um, what's there, let me know so I can perhaps use the zoom function to let you know, or I can just tell about it. Um, but yeah, that's just a, a limitation that I can't uh, go around with. Um, all right, so a study resources. So what have I done so far? Well, uh, there's one guy um, on YouTube um, and he also made a plugin actually for Blender to export your, your, your plane from Playmaker to Blender and back, uh, which is Dan. 
Mr. Dan, Dan Klau. Um, and he has a great, great, I think almost unique YouTube channel about creating your own aircraft in Plane Maker and also using Blender. So he was my primary resource for learning uh, to do this stuff, um, which is um, highly recommended. Um, so I'm following in his guiding as well, uh, in his, in his um, explaining tutorials almost of how to make your own uh, aircraft. Um, I guess there are still a lot of things that I've, while I was viewing those videos that I thought, hmm, how does that work or how does that work? So it's not a complete kind of tutorial program, but it does provide a good starting point. So Dan Cloud, that's the, that's the guy in the explain community, at least to follow uh, at YouTube. You also find him on forums. Um, really, really great uh, videos that teach you how to build your own um, aircraft, at least in those, in those early stages. For Blender, a Blender Guru, great tutorials, very sophisticated and extended, starts a very nice guy uh, telling about Blender. Uh, I've only seen the first four episodes or so uh, where you're gonna build a donut in Blender. I, I, did, I did not do that exercise, but I've just been viewing those videos to get a sense of what Blender is like and how much time it would take me to, um, to create a proper carpet, for example. Um, so still, I'm gonna, and also that also applies to Dan, um, I need to study these resources quite Quite, uh, extensively still. Um, also what's wonderful, uh, I said hi to Rush in his uh, stream yesterday and uh, he already knew that I was uh, about to start these, this series of uh, building my own Skyhawk and he said, well Tim, if you need any guidance or any tips, I would love to share my experience and knowledge and skills of how to build an aircraft. That's great. Uh, he was already on my mind, uh, but he uh, just spontaneously already offered his help, which is great because he has made the, as you already know, the Piper Cup uh, with SIM coders as well. It's a great looking airplane. Um, so I'm also really looking forward to inviting Rush, perhaps here also on stream or through Discord or whatever, um, to also especially at the onset of the project to get an, again a general idea of what's ahead of me and to avoid any common pitfalls. Um, so uh, for example, looking at the progress bar, I think I'm right to say that we need to start with Playmaker and then do, I've also read a few forum posts of guys saying, well, you need to skip Playmaker uh, in the early stages, just start with Blender and then load in Blender into Playmaker. And well, it would be quite unfortunate if I would spend a couple of months building an, an, a 3D model and then discover that I should actually do things the other way around. So uh, getting some early advice is very, very important. So I'm hoping that Rush can provide us with that uh, feedback. I would love to have him on stream um, also to share with you guys to see uh, what it's like to build an aircraft, a plane in, uh, in X-Plane. Um, Yes, uh, Ronald um, is a very nice guy that I met at FS Weekend, one of the biggest uh, flight simulator conventions in Europe, uh, in Lelystad. Um, and he is also making airplanes, but not an X-plane, but for FSX and prepared. Uh, also uh, very experienced with, uh, with Blender. And he, um, he also was so kind to send me all kinds of emails and links of in interesting and very relevant resources that I still need to uh, explore a bit more. Um, but again, what I really love, and I already noticed that just by announcing this particular vlog series, that uh, there are actually a lot of sim pilots that are almost primarily working with building their own airplanes. It's it's. I already knew, obviously, that there were there, that there were people building airplanes, but I thought it was it was a much smaller sub community, um, and I actually think that building an airplane, uh, an X plane or prepared or FSX, it doesn't really matter, might actually interest a lot of sim pilots uh, who are just flying an airplane. Uh, it's it's just a very nice design, kind of nice exercise a nice addition to your usual flight training practice. So um, I'm actually quite surprised to see how big the community actually is, how many sim pilots are also working on building their own aircraft, also making their own liveries of, uh, obviously, but also just creating aircraft and how fun that actually is. And I think it should actually, it can actually be perceived as an integral part of the sim, of, of flight simulation practice. Um, rather than just only spending your time on flying an airplane, which is still my 
something that then that really really excites me uh, to learn how to fly but building an airplane as well is a really nice nice addition and actually might also benefit my flight training as well to get a better appreciation of of the physics and the modeling and and this well all of that stuff that uh, aircraft engineers are considered uh, are concerned with um anyways um, yes, we got also the Plane Maker manual freely available uh, through X-Plane. Um, it's an HTML one pager, a very, very uh, large, um, uh, big file. Um, again, that manual only made sense to me um, having seen a lot of videos by them. Um, so uh, within the Plane Maker manual, you already see a lot of references to stuff that didn't really quite make sense, um, at least when I started reading it, um, when I had no, no prior knowledge at all. Um, so I reread it and now it makes a lot more sense. So again, you're developing a kind of like a conceptual framework of how to make sense of all of the stuff that they are telling about. Um, but Plane Maker is a good uh, manual, is, in, is a good resource as well. Obviously the forums um, at Explain, um, the aircraft engineering section provides a lot of information. Um, and it's also very, very fun and stimulating to see others um, creating aircraft and showing first pictures and screenshots of what they're working on. And obviously questions and, uh, and answer solutions to uh, nasty problems. But it's really inspiring to see how many people are working there with really great passion on building their own aircraft. Not, e not even commercially, but just for their own. Um, or groups of, of uh, um, uh, well, uh, engineers, aircraft engineers there. Of, you're not going to call it sim pilots, but sim sim plane creators um, who are creating these really nice communities in which they are challenging each other to create better airplanes or newer airplanes or to optimize their existing models. Um, so it's a really nice sub community that I wasn't that aware of and I'd like to be part of that. So um, that's also nice. And obviously you guys, uh, that's also was also the same with my uh, flight training series. I would love to meet many more of you as well who are already familiar with building airplanes. And um, please share your knowledge and experience and your tips through the chat here at, at the channel, at YouTube or at Twitter, wherever you are, email me with tips that might help uh, because I think um, those tips and th that knowledge might actually be um, quite useful, not only for me, but also for others to start building their own aircraft and just spread the word and create as much fun as, as possible. So an invitation, please share any experience you have. Uh, I would love to learn more. Um, as much as I am an uncertified pilot, I'm also an uncertified aircraft engineer. So um, in that same spirit, um, uh, please share. Okay, so that completes, I guess, kind of like the general orientation of what I'm up to and what you're seeing right now. Um, so, what are we going to do? What are we going to do today? Um, first, I think um, it might be fun to look at a feature list, also just to further develop on the idea that we're actually going to build a Skyhawk. What kind of Skyhawk are we going to build? Um, and uh, what kind of neat features would we like to see? Uh, and again, this is an invitation. I mean, we're gonna build that Skyhawk. It's gonna be freely available. It's gonna take some time though to, to, to create it, uh, but it might be a fun dot on the horizon uh, if we have some interesting features that we would love to see someday. Um, so um, I'm already gonna gather those and perhaps it might also be relevant input for our chat with Rush or others. Um, so they know, well, if you'd like to build that feature, be sure to already incorporate blah, 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 blah early on because well, that kind of thinking. So feature list, uh, what I also like to do is to gather uh, first um, spec, not only the tables, um, uh, of the uh, 172 SP, but also images, uh, transparent images of the front side and top view, because you can load those in Playmaker as I already mentioned, and that makes the 3D modeling a lot more easy. Um, so that's what I'm gonna look for, high res um, pictures. Um, and I've also read that actually the, the holy grail is the maintenance manual. A every aircraft has a maintenance manual. I've seen, I've seen one for the Skyhawk, I believe which provides very, very detailed information, complete information, I guess, of all components of the aircraft. So, uh, in the in cockpit, the everything. 
uh, all the wiring in the airframe. Um, so let's see if we can find one specifically for our um, 172SP version. So that's what we're gonna do today, guys. I hope you are uh, you are as excited as I am. And again, it's it's also interesting uh, from my experience here that um, I remember the same kind of vibe and curiosity and and interest as I had when I first started my very first stream episode when I uh, wanted to learn how to fly the Skyhawk, uh, and I had no clue. Uh, where to start and had no idea what was coming ahead of me uh, in terms of training and challenges and stuff. So um, yeah, this is uh, this is really, really fun. So Vero, you should mention that Dan, so this Dan guy that I was talking about, Dan Clown, is the head behind Thranda the team who is responsible for all Caronado, Alabeo, and Just Fly planes for X-Plane. Oh, wonderful, Zvero. I didn't know that. Well, it doesn't surprise me because the guy showed lots of uh, airplanes and stuff that really looked amazing. Also, that um, that channel of his and those videos are already quite dated. Um, I don't know, 2009 or something like that. So I also noticed that the interface of Blender that he is using at the time is quite different from the current UI of Blender. So uh, perhaps there might be also be uh, some substantial differences between how to work with those programs um, once we are going to work with those as well. Um, but yeah, I didn't know that. Okay, interesting. Yeah, Dennis uh, is the guy, I guess. Okay, so um, yeah, let's have, uh, let's have fun. So first I'd like to have some uh, some music here. No work without music. All right, so, gone and away. Feature list. What are we gonna build, guys? A Skyhawk, the Skyhawk of our dreams, at least of my dreams. What would I like to see? Well, first off, and I'm comparing this with the already existing 172s out there um, by A2A also, but also uh, the default 172 and also um, the uh, Airfuel Labs one. One main thing that I would like to see is the proper dimensions of the actual 172 Skyhawk cockpit. Uh, for example, with the Airfoil Labs, the dimensions don't are, are not right. Uh, it looks like a deformed kind of cockpit. I mean, you can recognize it's a 172, but it's not exact. Uh, at least not from my experience sitting in an actual 172. Um, and also with the default um, X explain um, uh, 172, the the dashboard, the black dashboard thing, uh, is much too extended in such a way that I'm unable to see the enunciator panel when I'm sitting like I should be in the cockpit. So there are. I guess it's not the only thing that's for A to A, for example, that 172 really looks great. Um, at least I didn't notice any differences when I was sitting in that real world 172. Um, so that's really important to me. I'd like to really try to get the dimensions right in the cockpit. So um, that's the first one. Great dimensions. Cockpits. For example, the dashboard or how, whatever you call it. Um, but also the instruments layout. Um, okay. What else? Well, cabin windows. Uh, interactive and I'd like to have a lot more interaction points well you might think well what's the point of okay it's a fun gimmick that you can open your window but I'd like to actually provide sim coders with interactions that they can use and include in their rep to for example make the um, the windshield fog up and that kind of stuff that A2A and all of the others are doing Afro Labs as well um, so cabin windows interactive um, also the cabin Heat. Um, what's the other one? Uh, we've got cabin heat. We could also got cabin air. Uh, ELT. 
Yeah, so it's the full, we can list all of the different individual components here, which might be make the list quite extensive. But just to have a sense of what I'm up to. Um, let's see, interactive. Uh, slant alpha radio stack at li initially and again I don't know whether I need to actually build and develop those radio stacks from scratch as well perhaps there are some already pre-developed pre-developed radio stacks that you can just put into our existing model because x already has those um, I don't know anyways a slant alpha radio stack um, I'd like to have the just the basic primary instruments layout, so I don't want an a a HSI. Just the basic student pilot Skyhawk. Um, original heading indicator. Not the HSI. Although, uh, what I also really like about the A2A version is that you can just grab a window and just change the cockpit on the go. And you can change from an ordinary HI to a HSI. Um, Jeff, do you still fly on GTA? No, I don't. Perhaps uh, with GTA 8 or so when flying becomes a little bit more realistic. But um, now with X-Plane and flight simulation here, uh, it's so much fun uh, and provides so much more realism than uh, GTA. But I'm really looking forward to the developments of G GTA though. Um, original HI, yes. Um, what I also like is pilots. Pilot models in the cockpit. Um, and dependent on payload so if you load up um, put some weight in the co-pilot seat once you reach a particular number of pounds suddenly it should be a pilot model a pilot sitting next to you or a friend or something like that the same I would like to see with baggage uh, shoot case model baggage double G okay baggage compartments <laughs> Jeff great yeah I remember mine GTA videos as well that's where it all started well I was I was already familiar with flight simulation a long time ago but um that's GTA re-sparked my interest in flight simulation uh, back in the day. Um, suitcase model, yeah. Um, oh yeah, control wheel lock. And again, these are things that are already existing, so I'm not listing any features here that I think are are universally missing in Skyhawk versions. I'm just making a list of the most main things that I'd like to build in my own in my own Skyhawk. And again, I just need to make the airframe first. Uh, these are things that will be something that I will consider only very late in the project or much later in the project. But it's nice to already have some kind of a vision that's really inspiring and stimulating. So that's why I'm working on this um, list right now. What Mac are you using? Uh, this is an iMac, and I have no idea about this Mac. That's what I'm using. Um, control wheel lock. Um, yes. What else, guys? What else do we need? Um, what I also like, and these are... What I also really like to make which perhaps is going to be a little bit more challenging although i have seen that playmaker can do that i'd like to also be able to have loose loose baggage in the cabin so when you are turning perhaps as part of an emergency or so that the baggage can tumble around the cabin and it can actually be 
quite annoying. Uh, which also can happen in real world. So that's why it's so important that you secure your baggage. So I'd like to also incorporate a scenario where you put in baggage or a suitcase in the baggage compartment, but you forget to secure it. And if you and if you do, things be, get loose and you hear rattling and stuff in the cockpit. I think that's that's interesting and relevant. Uh, Also secure option. Um, so say loose baggage in cabin emergency. Are you making a game? No, I'm not making a game, Jeff. I'm I'm flying an X-Plane, which is a proper flight simulation package, um, just commercially available for anyone. And I've been flying for three, two years or so, uh, really learning a lot. So just hop over to uncertifiedpilot.com and you can see what my project is all about. And in parallel to my flight training, I also love to learn how to build my own aircraft for X-Plane in the flight sim using all kind of 3D modeling and Photoshop. And that's what I'm working right now, what I'm working on right now. And this is just the very first episode. So um, just making a list here of features. Control your lock, obviously. What else are cockpit things that we like to see? Well, obviously lights, flashlights already built in and explain. Yeah, what I also like to see, perhaps we can make a distinction here between um, cockpit and external. What I also think might be cool and should work is I would also love to see ice, icing on window edges. I mean, you can create that not only in Photoshop texture like, but actually 3D, 3D icing. Um, Yeah, the raindrop kind of thing. I'm hoping that X-Plane is going to implement the raindrop effect like FS World is doing. Uh, but let's just put it in. Uh, raindrop animation. I mean, Airflow Labs is also also provides that animation already. Um, so perhaps we can build our own as well. I mean, this is, and again, this I'm not saying that this is going to be easy, but I know it's possible. And uh, just... With some clarity of mind, it just takes time, and you—we you, can make that stuff. I really want to get into flying, but I don't know what equipment a beginner needs. Well, Jeff, just have to take a look at my YouTube channel. Uh, my first episode, I'm explaining what equipment I'm using, and um, that might be a good start. Um, Rainer's narration. Um, yeah. Um, well, all of that. Those chocks and stuff, wheel chocks and the pitot tube cover is actually something that sim coders already provides. But let's just put those here anyway. Pitot tube cover, wheel chocks, engine cover. Um, tie downs. Oh yeah, what I also like to yeah, but that's that's perhaps different stuff. Um, I would love to have a physical walk around feature, so that you like with the airflow labs that you can actually step out of the cabin in X plane and walk around like you were actually walking around, and not go through all of the different windows. And it's it's a little bit of a gimmick because it doesn't provide any educational value at all. It's just it, it is just. I guess an argument for, for immersion or so. Um, but I did like it. I'm just gonna put it there. I mean, we are we are the engineers, right? We are the architects. A physical walk around. Or perhaps this has, no, this has nothing to do with, most likely has nothing to do with Plane, Plane Maker and Blender. This is more like a Python kind of thing, a plugin that needs to be developed. Uh, but perhaps we can tickle sim coders to create uh, create such a thing. 
Um, but uh, also, um, three, um, yeah, these are animations actually. Uh, I'd like to also be able to remove my view cap. Uh, removable view caps. Hey, expert pilot, good to see you. Have you got any discount codes for Chase Plane? Nope. No, I'm not using change, chase, uh, chase Plane at all, actually. Uh, remove a few caps. What else? Tie downs all also have the um, preheater, ancient preheater. Chill, sounds good. Mm, yeah, walk around with a few caps. Mm, switchable. What else can we do? What else can we do with 3D modeling in a Skyhawk cockpit to make things cool? Mm. Oh yeah. Circuit breakers. Good one, Tether. Good one. Um, removable, removable cow to check oil level. Very good. And with that, uh, also the option or scenario where you could not fully screw on the oil cap. It's a very important check also in the real world when you're gonna do your pre-flight. We should build it in as well. Same with the baggage. You can put it in, but you also need to secure it. Um, uh, yeah, cap. Your option. Hey Lee, I love the idea of having a clickable bag manual tablet in the cockpit to pull up for data manuals. I'm not sure of that playmaker though. Hmm, clickable bag manual tablet in the cockpit to pull up performance data and manuals. That's a good one. Yeah, so with SIM coders, it's now a, yeah, it's now a, um, a menu. But you would actually like to, that's a good one. Good one, keep those uh, ideas coming guys. Um, so that's a cockpit idea. Um, so your flight bag, flight bag, uh, clickable to bring up uh, performance tables. Ah, got another one, which is also flag, flight bag related. Um, need to clean up this list uh, eventually, but anyways, a clickable we're going to bring up, but also uh, when we're flying, we need to also be sure that we've got a airworthiness and your um, pilot license and stuff. You should check that before you fly. Oxygen masks, but 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got all kinds of other ideas. A clickable to bring up performance tables. Um, pilot license. Uh, airworthiness. But also... Um, aircraft maintenance stuff. And again, this is stuff that Simcoders already has. So I'm also I'm kind of developing this idea, this concept of the Skyhawk based off what Simcoders already provides because I'm already parted with Simcoders um, and I guess they would love to um, connect the, the rep to this aircraft as well once it's there. Um, and then those guys really own Python, the plugin kind of dimension to explain. And so if we can hook that architecture up to the 3D models, then we can do interesting stuff. I think. I don't know. As long as you don't have to pay for the medical. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maintenance. But I should include that as well. Aircraft maintenance. Uh, medical. Other thing that I noticed, or what I remembered, a fire extinguisher. Extinguisher. Um, if it's in the green, I'm always always using that, or I'm always mentioning the fire extinguisher uh, when I'm um, flying, but it's, it's not an interaction thing. I don't think, I think it is modeled in the default 172, but it's somewhere tucked in between the seats, the front seats. We need to check those to make sure that's in the green, uh, in the green arc. So that means that the needle needs to be animated as well. And sim coders can then animate the, I can I can make it an, an animated needle and they can perhaps, hopefully, well then no, what you're doing here is you're actually creating a new data ref, I think, which is then called fire extinguisher. And then Sim carters can play with that data ref using Python. I think I think it's something like that. Don't know if we can create our own data refs, but I love I love to learn. Hmm. Life vest. And actually, I think these should be multiple as well. So not only for the piloting command, but also for the passengers. So you also, the Sky also challenges you to consider your, pay, your, your passengers and do proper passenger management. Mm, yeah, so life vest. Under seats and yeah, the the E six B, yeah, we cannot model that in the cockpit. That's much too fancy, and also not that not that important because you have one in your own physical sim cockpit. What else, guys? What else do we like? Let's bring up a cockpit of a 172 for inspiration. Um, 172 SP cockpit. No glass cockpit. I know that's fancy and the default already has it, but I'd like to get, I would like to have the, the default original. Yeah, this one, this one. I also love to have this dated GPS. This is the GPS that I find most often in Skyhawks here in, in the Netherlands at least. So not the fancy 430. No idea how that works. And I think it's going to be an entire new season to create um, the uh, this particular GPS. Anyways, um, circuit breakers we mentioned. Um, radio lights, yeah, glare shield, all of that stuff. I don't know if that's also animated in the default 172 at the moment. 
Cabin um, okay, heat and air. Let's. We need to condense this list soon, but um, radio light thingy knob and the glare shield light knob clear shield placards good one Dether. uh yeah placards yeah oh that would also be cool a um um carbon monoxide indicator so there are scenarios where you might burn your electrical equipment or there's a leak from the engine into the cockpit where carbon monoxide can build in the cockpit and you cannot smell it but it just happens and it can well you can pass out while flying and so in many cases um, um, perhaps you can also enlarge my mouse cursor can I can I create can I make my mouse cursor bigger so I can point to that well I guess I can also use the drawing app uh, to do that let me see well, it doesn't really matter um, usually there might be a sticker there here on the firewall that can do that and it changes color when there is a particular level of carbon monoxide and then you got a visual indication like oh my gosh there's carbon monoxide here open a window and land or whatever um, I would love to see that animated as well because I think I don't know if it's also modeled already in X-Plane <clears throat> not the animation but carbon monoxide I don't know but it would be fun to also animate some spatial or some disorientation because of that um, together with some coders um, so let's put that in as well um, carbon monoxide sticker what else um, basic base basic already mentioned this an unshader obviously so again here this particular thing this dashboard or glare shield is not that ex not that much extended as the default 172 currently is and also the default 172 as is with the airflow labs doesn't have the right proper dimension or shape of of the of the um, of the cockpit and i'd like to get it just right a2a really is leaning on that front it just care just like just get it right guys get it right interactive char that's too difficult That's too difficult. Now cut off and all that stuff. Obviously should be already there. Mm, anything else? No, I don't think so. Just an ordinary cabin. Just give me a cabin. Anything that we're missing, guys? Seat belts. Seat belts. Usually those are just textured on top of the seats. But wouldn't it be cool? Like we need to secure our baggage and we need to secure our flight bag and all of that stuff that we also need to secure ourselves. And I'm doing that funnily enough with my own seat belts here in my chair that I just built because I'm a complete aviation nerd. But why not also do that in the sim and if you don't secure yourself secure your seat belts you're dynamically you're you might fall from your seat 
That's an interesting one. Seat belts secure option. Control lock already have Dether. Thanks. Already have that one. Anything else? Yes. What I also think is what also also think is cool is to be able to remove the magneto switch keys out of the magneto thing and put it on the dashboard. Don't know how fancy and advanced this is, guys, but it is possible. Um, removable mac starter switch starter switch key to put on top of dashboard or whatever it's called hmm it's also good Haley um, but I uh, that's true or th but I don't know if that's a real-world scenario I guess when you're flying back country, your windshield might get quite dirty. Yeah, and bugs. That's that's also interesting. As a random scenario. Oh, bird strike. Bird strike. Um, yes, bird strike. Um, broken window. Like Air for Labs is already doing, uh, but also a bug, a bug in a um, in the cockpit. But because it's not a real physical danger, because it's obviously just virtual. I mean, with the bird strike, if your windshield is broken, it really deteriorates your view to spot the um, uh, the, the runway or the airports but with a bug and it's just virtual you only hear a bug sound or something like that and I don't think we can really work with that but you can treat it as a real world thing like it would with the baggage by the way it's the same it's, uh, it's the same thing so bug in the cockpit that's a good one happens there are really interesting reports of uh, aircraft accidents um, caused by having a bug in the cockpit or the pilot failure to, to deal with that on the ground. You think, oh, that's just a bug. Let's just keep it there. And uh, it stings the passengers and it gets an allergic reaction. And suddenly there's an emergency and all kinds of mistakes happen. Well, we cannot simulate that, obviously, in X-Plane. But bug in the cockpit. And then you can open a window to get, in, get the bug out. I'll just keep it there. Just make a complete list. We can rearrange and condense and do whatever we like to. Haley, just watching Cessna walk around videos, getting ideas. Good one. Yeah, good one. I should perhaps do that as well. What else? What else? What else? Covers. 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 That's also nice. That's a good one. Um, airframe blankets cover for winter. What else? What else? Bird's nest. Um, engine. Bird nest in intakes. Well, it's not really in the intake. The birds go through the intakes of the engine, through the nose here, 
and they actually build a nest uh, near the firewall and especially in winter times because when you've just flown the engine is obviously warm and birds have a sense of getting to those warm spots so especially after a flight birds might creep into the engine through the uh, engine intakes that's a nice one uh, bird nest in intakes not intakes but in the engine or on top of the engine underneath the cow exactly Haley. exactly yeah so that's the whole idea so i'm not i'm not looking for just gimmicks like oh that's that would be nice if that would be there but especially when it when we can connect these 3d modeling animations to proper flight performance for example if you forget to do your walk around and forget to spot the bird's nest imagine what will happen when you start your engine so um we can actually make these things relevant so what's next what's what's what else do we need what else What else? Mm, flat tires. Uh, flat tires. And also, not only flat tires, but um, you should also have be able to animate that peaking window. If you've got these things, how do you call those? Those units? These fair fairings? I don't know what the English word is. Um, anyways, there are very tiny openings there, kind of like small windows or doors that you can open to peek at the wheels to see whether those are, um, whether the wheel has been damaged. Uh, there's a, a small red mark on the metallic inner part of the wheel and a small same similar red mark on the rubber part of the tire. And those two marks should align. That's how they were made. And when they are not aligned, that indicates that the rubber part of the wheel has been moved or damaged or was pushed alongside the metallic inner part of the wheel. It might indicate damage. Uh, because of a hard landing or whatever. And that's why you should check that as well. Um, flat tire animation, um, but also uh, peaking window, <laughs> or whatever it's called, I don't know the English word for that. Um, door at wheel markings. And I, there should be a changing texture there as well. So if you make a hard landing, we can measure that. We can load up a different marking of the wheel and also consequently change the friction and the stuff of how the wheel behaves while you are taxiing so you'll actually notice that the wheel is damaged. So uh, wheel markings, um, Related to landing impacts. So far, so good. Tire pressure. Yes, but as part of the walk around, you're not going to check the pressure. Ah, it would also be cool to model. I mean, eventually modeling, I've seen those guys model with Blender, model whatever object in such a short amount of time i mean once you get the hang of it it's 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 not that difficult so it might also be fun to create a 3d object a uh, some kind of air pressure machine that you can evoke to then increase the pressure in the tires um but flat tires plus um air pressure thing 
Fuel sample, good one. Uh, but that's something that is animated and something that Simcoder is, is already doing. We could make a fuel sample, fuel thing, a tube in 3, 3D model, but that would not really be that relevant, I guess, in comparison to just a picture that shows you the different contamination. That's, that's Simcoder's work, I think. But it's it's not bad to just think in terms of of um, parts that can break. For example, what do you think about propeller blade dents, like HOA is doing? Propeller dents. Um, or. Well, yeah, we also have a lot of antennas on the Skyhawk, the transponder, the squawk, the communi communication antennas on top of the Skyhawk. And you should also verify that they are secure, but that's something that I think is not that... doesn't often happen that I would suddenly be insecure or it has been loosened up or... Yeah, exactly. DS. What else? In terms of what can break? Usually break. Flat tires. Wow. Dense in the propeller base. Okay. Burst nest. Yes. Burst strike. Yes. Broken landing lights. Glass. No. Um, what's also cool, perhaps is but I don't know how often it actually happens because that, that's a that's an important measure um, is that the ribbons or the not the, how do you call it not ribbons but the I don't know these English names guys sorry names for these parts um, Skyhawk surface those screws or bolts that keep together the outer plates of the aircraft. How do you call those? Those little bubbles, those... You, you, what I learned is then uh, flight instructors also try to train you to feel all of the leading edges of the airplane to make sure that they are not also dense or stuff or bumps or things, but also that the... that everything is tight. Rivets! Rivets, rivet, rivet. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. Yeah, the, the, these things. Um, don't know if they are, they, if it's common that they come untight. But I do know that it's part of the suspension sag caused by failure of shock absorber, yeah. But I don't know with a Skyhawk if that's worth animating that some one would be unstuck. But you could also say, well, perhaps that's not the right measure to use because the idea of using the Skyhawk or flying the Skyhawk, at least in my mind, is that it just stimulates you to take to put care into your pre-flight and it doesn't matter whether it is a frequent failure it's just yeah so we're going to include it so um loose rivets 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 and we should pick a couple so it randomizes so it's a little bit of a surprise i guess Okay. Uh, what do you guys think of floats on the Skyhawk? I 
or skis. I'll just put it on the list and just as a reminder that it's something that we should perhaps consider at a later time. What else? What else? I mean, all of the wiring and all of the other stuff that can go wrong, that's, it's not worth 3D animating that. I think. I'm also wondering whether that's even possible. Because you, when you load an airplane in X-Plane, you, um, you preload an already existing 3D model, right? And you might then also already load some additional 3D models, but you hide them in the airframe. And as soon as they become relevant because of some Python sim coders kind of thing that you messed up while flying the Skyhawk, it just appears. It was already there, but it comes out of hiding. The same is done with the Airflow Labs Skyhawk, and I think also with A2A, where the pilots or the co-pilot model with, uh, with Airflow Labs, um, is already sneaked into, foiled into um, the engine. And so as soon as you load in a particular payload in the co-pilot seat, it just appears. It was already loaded, but it was hitting be be behind the firewall. Um, and I think we can do the same thing with all of the stuff that we were just mentioning here. Okay, so that's good. But it's it's a question perhaps that we should ask um, Rush. Um, flexibility. Um, external 3D objects. Um, rivets. Bird strike, bird nest. Yeah, I already know. So I believe Torico, who's creating the TBM, the plane lives in a constant state. So if you flood the engine, then get off X plane, it will still be flooded when you get back. So I believe what you're talking about is definitely possible. Oh yeah, that's also important, but that's something that Simcoders is doing. It's not It's not part of the 3D modeling, actual engineering of the aircraft. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. But thanks for, thanks for thinking along. Okay, this is quite a, already quite a complete list, guys. So a cockpit correct dimensions, that's very important to me. So proper high res pictures of a cockpit of the Skyhawk and we're gonna build it. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna visit our local airport here um, and visit, uh, meet up with the uh, flight instructor that has been uh, teaching Mirai to, to fly, at least in that introductory um, flight that I've also streamed and posted on my channel um, and use and just hoping that I could just spend a day in that Skyhawk when it's not flying and do all the measures and photograph the shit out of that Skyhawk I will do the same with the sounds I would also love to learn how to create my own sound set The only thing with that aircraft is that it doesn't have a original HI, but an HSI, but... Uh, 
Okay, correct dimensions. Cabin windows, heat and air, radio light knob, glare shields. ELT, exactly. Removable starter switch key to put on top of dashboard. That's nice. Carbon monoxide sticker. Good one. And it's, I, I'm not talking about a texture because that's not difficult at all. You can just put a texture in Photoshop and, and then it's there. But an actual animated carbon monoxide sticker. Um, seat belts, also nice. Um, slant alpha radio stacks. Original HIS, circuit breakers, exactly, pilot model. Uh, in the cockpit, depend on payloads. But I think it's also cool. to perhaps be able to distinguish between different types of pilot models. For example, I would love to see Mireia animated virtually in my cockpit when I'm flying next to me as my co-pilot. At the same time though, I would also love to see my dad sitting next to me in the cockpit while I'm flying. And we could model those pilots. But again, I also imagine that you guys like to have particular person so perhaps it's better to just create generic I mean Rush made his made himself as a pilot in the in the Piper Cub mm. I'll just put it here generic pilots we could also do fun competitions I guess or prizes where I could make a particular model for the winner. Anyways, water in the fuel tanks. Water in the fuel tanks. Yeah, that's already... Um, accounted for by sim coders but it's just a texture that shows in a, in a window pane whether there's water contamination or not and i think that's the best way to do it rather than just just 3d model that stuff which is quite hard with water in x-plane i think it's better just to stick with the 2d textures but it should be included though and it's or it is already included with sim coders so that's checked suitcase model but perhaps not just only a suitcase that you can change the weight of but multiple um yeah that's nice yeah that's nice that's nice um baggage Um, different baggage items, for example, in a suitcase, generic bag, whatever, um, but also together with different storing positions so what I mean with that and then plus the secure option that that would be interesting so rather than I don't know if explain allows for that but if I have a suitcase that I, with the Skyhawk I can determine whether I'm gonna put that suitcase in the baggage compartment or whether I'm gonna put it on the front seat with me or and that that is actually influencing the payload and so also the way the aircraft behaves or i'm going to stack all of those baggage items on top 
in the baggage compartment, then I would have another, obviously another payload than when I stack those uh, next to me in the front seat. Um, and so loading up your baggage and also your passengers, it's also for the passengers. Uh, so rather than just a gimmick of loading up, yeah, but that's, that's already done. You can already, or can you? Yeah, Airflow Labs already is doing that, but I think that would also be awesome with baggage. Option to, and sim coders should do this, I guess, if they like. Um, option to pick where passenger sits in the plane. Yeah. Loose baggage in cabin. Yeah, not baggage, but rubbish, trash. Um, emergency, yeah, just as a random emergency, but perhaps also as part of a check, um, because we can also imagine perhaps that the Skyhawk is rented. And that's, Another pilot has just left some trash in the cabin without you knowing. And so as part of the pre-flight, you should make sure that there's no trash in the cabin. Wouldn't it be cool if we could just create a Coca-Cola can or something like that stuck behind whatever that you can pick up and remove? Um, Cola can to get rid of as part of pre-flight. Interesting. That's interesting. Flight bag is also a good one. Clickable to bring up performance tables. Control wheel lock. Fire extinguisher in the green arc. Life vests. Baggage under seats. Optional under each seat. Placards, obviously. Bird strike, broken wind. Shields, um, and only the front one, obviously. It could also be a side window, but the door. Uh, the door can be closed, but it should also be locked. And what the default 172 is doing is combining those into one flow. So you close the door and you lock it. But it's actually a, quite an explicit item on the checklist and some pilots forget to actually lock the door. And so it can become un unstuck. Uh, and I have seen, which is I think not really proper training, but it was quite interesting to see, a YouTube movie where a CFI went behind the back, literally, of the student pilot flying. It was actually not really a student pilot, it was already an experienced pilot f doing a certification flight for bush flying or something like that. Quite an experienced pilot, but the, the CFI or the endorsement kind of guy was sitting in the co-pilot seat and he was putting his arm behind the seat of the, of the pilot in command, of the Bush pilot XM&E, &E, um, and opened the door. And the trick, during takeoff, just after, a ro not really after rotation, I guess around 200 feet or so. And the idea was, as you should with this, as a pilot, you should fly the plane first. So when you notice that the door becomes unstuck, rather than just refocusing to the door and trying to lock it, then that's mostly the time when accidents happen. Uh, you should focus on your primary instruments and well, acknowledge the fact that the door is not closed, but it's not a big problem at all. Uh, but it, it can be 
quite distracting. Um, and it might be cool to also incorporate that as well. So to really explicitly distinguish closing the door and locking it, because if you don't lock it, we can create, SIM carders can create, a scenario where after takeoff, the door becomes unstuck. And also the other one, if you don't lock the other one, and it rambles, and you think, what, what's going on there? And that's also a good training, I think. That's a good one. Cockpit. Um, bug in cockpit, yes. And um, close and lock. Cabin door, if not locked, rambling after takeoff. Nice. Okay. Propeller dents, loose rivets, flat tires, that's a good one. Peaking window, yes, that's the damage. It doesn't necessarily mean that the, that the tire is flat, but it just means what it has shifted, whether the tire has shifted uh, in relation to the mechanical inner parts, and that might indicate damage. Icing on the window edges, that's a good one. Yeah, and the dirt, I don't think that that happens that much while flying on regular fields. And I think that the other guys do provide um, uh, liveries of, a, of an airplane that show a lot more dirt and are loaded after so many hours of flying, just universally, independent of whether you're actually flying over dirty runways. Um, That is cool. That is cool. Um, and the same perhaps you can do with the cockpit as well because of heavy use. Uh, so this is not 3D modeling, this is just Photoshop texturing, which is not that difficult, I guess. Um, different grades of wear in cockpit based off um, based on flight hours. There's no other way which we can do in. Do the same thing here. Skies. <laughs> Skis. I don't know how you... Different grades of wear. Of dirt. Yes. Ah, right, DS, okay. Well, I can ask the local pilots here whether um, they are Skyhawks. Um, that would also be cool. Wouldn't it be cool if you could clean your Skyhawk? Which technically is just reloading your livery from a most dirty one to the default clean one. That's cool. Um, option to wash your <laughs> Skyhawk. Reloading clean livery. <laughs> That's cool. Again, not educationally relevant at all. Although you could also say, well, if you f find a uh, if you do your pre-flight and you notice that your airplane is quite dirty, it is an indication that there might also be dirt in the engine and it probably is not being 
properly taken care of. So it, it, it might be an indication that the airplane is also a little bit faulty or... But that's it. Clean the windshields. Just make them way too dirty. Yeah, B2. B2. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, well, we can just take it all together. You can either clean it or not clean it. Well, what I'm also noticing with the airflow lamps did as well. No, with A2A it did. There's also a livery of the KLM 172. Wonderful livery here. Um, and as you can see, the color of the windshield is graded as well. It's a little bit greenish bluish. Um, but I haven't seen that grade that often, so I think it's not... Uh, relevant to do it um, to include it also with uh, with our Skyhawk and what are these things called guys these um, th these things you can put on are, are those fairings these thingies because you also like to put them on and off to your own liking I guess Um, wheel fairings, don't know, fairings, how do you call those? <laughs> Wheels, spots, spats, no, never heard of that one before. Wheel fairings are, I believe, yeah, fairings, thanks be to. <coughs> Why don't I find any wheel fairings? Looks good. Yeah, wheel fairings. And um, optional wheel fairings. Now I also know that A2A is also providing sim pilots with options to change or to optimize their flaps or their yeah, their flaps with additional fillers so you optimize the airfoil and therefore the flight performance but that stuff is not really animated i think with a 3d model object that's been added on top of the already existing 3d model of the aircraft it's just a again intellectual thing that is that's just provided to the flight model virtually not visually so that's not part of my work. But the wheel fairings obviously is a 3D model, so that should be added. Tie downs, I think this is about it, guys. Also the toe, toe bar and all that stuff is already in the, the Peter tube cover is already provided by sim coders. I guess they could also why not also create the fairings? I mean, with a Skyhawk, um, what the default Skyhawk in X-Plane, um, it already has fairings. So yeah, nothing that um, that sim carters can do about that. They cannot change. They're not allowed to change the existing aircraft model. So they can only put additional 3D models or objects on top of the already existing model. But if I make a Skyhawk without the fairings, then they can provide the option. So let's say no fairings. And then optional. Same with A2A is doing as well. You can change the 
propeller blades. But those are things that a regular student pilot, I mean, that's that's nice, but and it's it's fun to play around with, but this is not really part of the student pilot, regular student pilot life. I would rather rather than build in that baggage management thing because that does make sense. Where are you going to store your baggage? Anything else? I don't think so, guys. This is a nice list. A huge list. And we can further refine and optimize and expand on the list uh, while we progress through these series. But I really think that this is stimulating, at least from my point of view, to know we're going to create an awesome Skyhawk. It's so weird to imagine that that thing will actually come to life in 2018 at one point. I'm actually going to fly my own aircraft. That's, that's awesome. Okay, um, I have some other things to do. Just um, 15 minutes or so before I end the stream, I guess, and I'm gonna make some dinner. Um, what I'd like to do is get some images here. That's the most important bit for Playmaker. So what you can do, if you load up Playmaker, <clears throat> is this button here to the left. Um, let me see, whoop background bitmap uh, here in the left uh, bottom corner and what you can do is you can load up a front view top view whatever you like um, and it's loaded into this screen you can see it in the background and what you can then do is um, using uh, this skeleton view of um, and we're going to optimize this because this is much too general um, we can try to draw over that background image using these vertices um, and create a 3D model that, that is to scale. Um, so that, that's the general idea and that's why I need a proper high-res image of the front, top and side view. Um, and what matters here is what kind of model of a Cessna 172 are we going to build? Um, do we need to spend a lot of time on that I, I thought let's just do the SP because it's the newest latest model what are things that we need to think of evil this is a very interesting project the internal engine modeling alone could be a project on its own yeah I know also really looking forward to that as well um, but guys type of 172 types of Skyhawk Cessna Skyhawk Cessna and let's just search on a page here 172 yeah here 172 A B C F look at that cockpit <laughs> I mean it does look cool and and again I'm not I'm not really doing this project just to make a cool airplane. I mean, I would love to fly with such an airplane, but my primary mission here is to create a, a Skyhawk, a version of a Skyhawk that is practically relevant to those who are using X-Plane to actually learn how to fly, perhaps in preparation of their actual real-world flight training. So uh, it's best to create a Skyhawk that is most popular, I guess. RG, you've got the S, yeah, the S is also the SP, I think. I don't know where it, why, why the P is added. It does, oh, here, the model, this model is market, I oh, hear. Uh, as a result, the maximum takeoff weight was increased to 2,500 pounds. This model is marketed under the name Skyhawk. Other types of current data sheets specified it as a S. Roger. Yeah, and then you've also got the RG, but that's not what we're going to do. And then floats and all kinds of other stuff. Mm, yeah, so the 
Cessna 172S was introduced in 1998. That's already a long time ago. As of 2009, only the S model is in production. Yeah, that's uh, okay. So the others are just there because they were made. Um, does it matter that much what type we're gonna do? So I would say this is already a reason to go for um, to go for the S because it's the only one in production right now. Most common Cessna Skyhawk. And again, this, this is a number that's gonna change obviously over time. Most common Cessna Skyhawk model type. Most popular. Cessna Skyhawk model type um, sold or production perhaps. Do we see a graph or? Hmm, what do you guys think? What type of a Cessna Skyhawk are we going to build? I would say just the SP because it's, and, and for the argument that it's the, the current one in production, also makes it a lot more easy to find information. I would say the S, the Shara Papa. Skyhawk 172 SP maintenance manual maintenance obviously system 172 no this is the older one S S oh, yeah just the S maintenance manual are you kidding me this is the R 1996, but we need the one of 1998. But let's see what we get. Model 172 series 160 on revision. Maintenance manual, this is cool. Chapter five, time limits, maintenance checks. I, 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 I'm just here for fancy pictures. Ah, here they are. Oh yeah, look at that stuff. Well, we're not going to 3D model what well, we could, but I don't think that it's that necessary to create this model. We're not going to tinker with that. With the firewall and all those instruments and how they are hooked up, but... Nice. Uh, yeah, I want to have this. Um, desktop is good. And let's put it into the references. Even though it's the R model, looks good. Surface manual. What's the surface manual in comparison to a maintenance manual? No, no. Let's have a look. Yeah. 
if uh, we are allowed to. This is the POH of the 172S with the G1000. But I guess the POH does not provide. And I guess we don't need this much detail, but it's nice to have all the. Yeah, this is good. This is good. And this is the S, right? Yeah, this is the model. And it doesn't matter whether it's the G1000, I guess. It's just. Yeah, this is what we need. This is what we need. So what I can do, I'm gonna do that in the next stream, guys. I'm gonna zoom in, because this PDF, so this is gonna be, uh, ex yeah, this is exactly what I need. And this is to scale, so this width should be the same as this width. And we load up these images as three separate images into Playmaker. And we are going to work out a base airframe. So working from that cube, the fault cube that's loading into, uh, loaded into X-Plane, we're gonna create a basic fuselage and then wings, control surfaces on top of this background bitmap. And that's the idea. This is great. Um, download. Desktop. What's the desktop? There it is. Uh, references. Uh, let's see. Uh, do we have something else? Well, that was already quite uh, as uh, specifications. Pilot, plane and pilot magazine. Bang. Wingspan, overall length. Does it? Let me see, is this, this the R? Uh, where was the plane? Here's the plane. 36, yeah, it's, uh, it's the same. Seat capacity and stuff, wheel size. Yeah. Okay. So we got the specs, we got the pictures. That's great. Well. That's about it for our model. This is first, and we're gonna when we're gonna build the systems and all of the other stuff. We need to look more deeper into the specifications. But for now, this suffice. This is great. Nice. What else? Main this matter we have and the specs in the feature list. Wonderful. Okay, guys. Well, that completes the first episode here of um, this brand new video series. Let me. Uh, Close the music here. That was interesting. So what we did was we did this basic introduction here of um, of the of the overall challenge of making an aircraft, uh, an airplane, my own airplane, my own Skyhawk here for X plane. Um, and as I already mentioned, I'm doing this from scratch as a noob. Uh, I've just studied a few YouTube videos and read some forum posts and uh, the plane maker manual to get a general sense, a general idea of what it takes to develop an aircraft. And that's it. So um, this is not a tutorial series. This is just a vlog series of me learning how to create my own aircraft and explain. And uh, the goal is to make a study level Skyhawk. And what we did today was to do that orientation to see what apps I'm using and stuff. I, I, I hope you are as excited um, as I am. Um, and we started off with listing features of what the Skyhawk should be like, uh, at least in terms of interactions and animations, because I think those are actually, or can be quite important. And again, this is not to, uh, create something new commercially, uh, um, something that others have not done before. I'm primarily focused on just learning how 
to build an aircraft and explain and to learn much more about the Skyhawk as I can. And because we're doing this, why not already build in the features that I like to use, that we like to use when we are flying. So uh, this is actually secondary, uh, but still I, I like it to, to have a list um, because it, it further, um, it makes it much more clear in my mind what the Skyhawk may look like. And it well, actually kind of drives me to, to, to actually further develop it. So um, that's why I think this is important. And we'll keep it here on our desktop um, as an inspiration. And obviously we might come to new ideas or perhaps we learn that some of these features are actually much more complex than I just, I mean, it's, it's so easy just to write these down, but um, to actually make those work. Um, also, in terms of the progress bar on top, um, as I already mentioned, uh, I imagine that we're going to start with Playmaker and then with the Airfall Maker and blah, 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 blah. Um, I would actually love to chat with Rush first, uh, Aerosim Gaming, to make sure that I'm attacking, uh, starting this project um, uh, with the right mindset and also with the right programs and with the right considerations at first. Um, because uh, I really like to prevent a scenario where I'm building all kinds of neat stuff and eventually halfway down uh, I, I discover that I should actually done things differently and I need to start all over. That's not what I'm here for. Um, so that's why I think it's important to also sync with the Russian with others that are much more familiar. Now, if you're looking, if you're watching this video or this stream and you are already a bit familiar with how to build an airplane in, the, um, in, in X plane, Please share your knowledge or tips or advice through the stream, through chat or through email or whatever channel. Um, that's really, really much appreciated. Um, again, I'm the uncertified pilot, but as much an uncertified aircraft engineer. And I just love to learn this stuff. Um, so any um, anything that you can share is, uh, is much appreciated. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do for the next episode, just to have a list so we know what we're, uh, what we're up to, um, what we're going to do is we are going to crop a front side and top view of the Skyhawk uh, and try to create a basic airframe of the Skyhawk to scale. Now, obviously, those front side and top views of um, images of the Skyhawk are already to scale. Uh, but this is an important, uh, an important piece of the, uh, of the thing that we're gonna do next. Try to create a basic airframe of the Skyhawk to scale. Um, yeah, I will be quite pleased if I'm gonna manage it. I have no idea how much time that would take. Uh, we'll have to see, but we're gonna tinker with Playmaker. Also get familiar with Playmaker with the shortcuts and stuff. Um, so I um, cannot wait to start with that actually, but it's time for dinner. Mrs. Uncertified is also waiting for me, so that's why. Oh, Grumpy, good to see ya. What's up the chat? This seems like plane earning on a whole other level. <coughs> and I mean that in a good way. That's good to hear, old. <laughs> nice. Well, again, guys, thank you so much for dropping by here on the stream. Um, that's, uh, that's really, really appreciated. Um, as you know, um, the... Um, uh, the making of an aircraft uh, here is totally new to me, and so it's such a different parallel series um, than my uh, than my usual um, than my usual streams. So um, I love your encouragement and your interest also, and perhaps I can inspire you as well to create your own aircraft uh, in Plane Maker. Um, I think that it's creating a plane. I expect it's not going to be that difficult. It's just. I just need to study a lot of information, get familiar with a lot of new interfaces. But once you're there, you've got a great tool to, well, further enrich or expand on your flight simulation practice, I guess. So um, that's uh, that's really, really great. Um, yeah, let me see. Um, do I have a nice outro? Yes, I do have. So again, thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, a new parallel series. This doesn't mean that I uh, have quit flying, not at all. I think I'm gonna fly tomorrow and pick up the thread with my IFR training. I'm gonna start with some uh, departures or arrivals, I think. Um, so that's gonna be interesting uh, in IMC. Uh, because I'd like to get as close to the instrument rating and flight simulation as I possibly can with the Skyhawk to the Fault 172 and X-Plane. So if you're curious learning about that as well, um, be sure to come over. And soon we're gonna pick up the thread with the building of, uh, of the build of the Skyhawk as well. So a lot more streams, a lot more fun. I hope uh, you are as excited as I am. 
Thank you again so much guys for dropping by and as always, happy flights and blue skies.